I'm Malcolm Haslam. And I'm Janice Baker. History is important to us all because if we don't know where we came from, we'll keep making the same mistakes as society. Oh, that's deep. Oh, gosh, is it? <laughs> Craig Middleton from the Centre Democracy will join us. Oh, and also, Joni Coombe is going to join us with a very special fundraising show to talk about. Next on... Our time. My time. Our time. Your time. How lovely it is to see you. Oh, thank you. I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see much. Look, it's, it's lovely, hello. Yes. Have you settled in back after I, the big no, holiday? No, I'm not really. Still a bit wobbly. After a week? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Dare it takes I a while. Our special guest is Craig Middleton from uh, the History Trust. That's really officially where you're from. It is the History Trust of South Australia. That sounds now, very important. It does, doesn't it? It, well, it is important because, um, as you said in the introduction so well, if we don't know what, where we came from, we make many mistakes where we go to. But, um, Craig, how did you end up in the History Trust? Because your backstory is really interesting. Yeah, well, I've, I mean, I've always been passionate about history, as most people in that organisation are. Um, and so when I went to uni, I did an arts degree and, you know, over several courses of anthropology and, and um, political science, I, I landed on history and it just caught my attention, so I just kept, kept going. And then... When I was looking into master's degrees, I stumbled across a master's degree at Macquarie University in Sydney, and uh, it was a master's in museum studies. And before that, I had never even comprehended like where history could get me, other than being a school teacher, which I didn't want to be. No. Yeah. So yeah, the museum, uh, the museum side of this is interesting because mm. museums, of course, have changed so much as well. They have, yeah. So they're less a place for dusty old objects, and they're more a place to. I don't know. <laughs> I've been to a museum. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, we know what you, you mean by that. We do. Yeah. yeah, they're more, you know, they're about grappling with issues and particularly the, the space I'm working in right now, grappling with social issues mm. um, and democracy, which could be anything and nothing if you really think about it. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, but yes, but we are lucky that we live in such a democratic society. We are. And that we have the right to speak up. Now, um, the reason that we've asked you on the show is because because your department, is that the right word? Uh, branch. Branch, <laughs> all right, your branch. The leaf on your branch is a special one because you won an award for this particular... Just explain what the award was for. Yeah. We've got some pictures of this as well, so as Great. we're showing the pictures, we can explain what it was. Wonderful. So... My Actions Count, My Voice Matters is, is the newest exhibit. So the Centre of Democracy opened about two years ago and this is the first time we've gone back and looked at the exhibition and, and redeveloped it. Um, and and magically, yeah. watch you appear. Yes, <laughs> there that. I am. Um, so My Actions Count, My Voice Matters is an exhibition underpinned by two core ideals of democracy, which is voice and participation. Um, there are no objects in that in that exhibit, which is maybe a bit strange for people who are thinking about museums and historical objects. Well, that's right, but it really... Could we just go back to the previous photo because... Oh, just magic. Magic. Ray Crow is still with us from last week. Um, so it, the wheel that's there, just yeah. explain how this works. So you spin the wheel. Yep. You, whatever colour the wheel lands on, there's an associated coloured card below it. See, yep. there's a pink one. Yeah. Um, and... That section is about my actions count. So all those cards tell you to do something or perform something either in the space or outside of the space. OK. And then there's the pegboard that's next to it and you need yeah. to put the pegs in... Yeah, so there's a question above the pegboard and then there's on the pegboard it fades from green to pink and then you put yourself on that pegboard, whether you agree or disagree, and it's more like a spectrum. Right. And a lot of these questions that we ask aren't necessarily black and white, easy yes or no answers. They have a lot of, you know, you have to think about them and then formulate your answer. So the second part to this, um, this part of the exhibit is to then comment. 
and and, and share further your opinions. Yeah. yeah. So one of the questions could could have been, or was it? Uh, do you agree with the voting age being lowered? Yeah. So so the first question we started with was, should the voting age be lowered? And so a lot of people might just say yes or no, but when you really think about it, you might be like, oh, well, should a three-year-old have a vote? I don't know about that. Maybe just for 16-year-olds above, and maybe it should be voluntary for 16 What did you end up thinking? Oh, you know what? I'd love the voting age to be lowered just to see what would happen, but um, I don't know if I have a hard and fast but opinion on that. compulsory voting? Not compulsory. No, I think, you know, there's a lot of young people that are really informed and, like many adults, a lot of young people that couldn't care less. No, that's <laughs> no, true. It, Very it true. sort of does... It sort of almost forces you into having an opinion if you're yeah. asked the question. Yeah. You either say, I don't know, I don't care. Mm. Well, there's an opinion in itself. It is. Having no answer is an opinion. It's, very, yes. it's a political decision. Yeah. <laughs> and the prize that was... or the, This one... The, it did. Explain An that. Australian Museums and Galleries National Award. Um, they're actually called MAGNAS. So the, the national body that advocates and supports museums across the country, which is the Australian Museums and Galleries Association, um, since 2011, I think, have been um, running this national awards program. And the awards are selected by our peers, so it's peer-reviewed, basically. Aww. So there's groups of people who are expert in particular areas, whether that be exhibitions, in this case that's what that was, yeah. or education programs, you know, and every year at a national conference these awards are, are given out. Which is How fantastic. Brilliant. No, yeah. it is good. Then obviously it just keeps everybody motivated to change things along the way. And it's so nice to be recognised by your peers because yeah. um, these things, like, they seem really simple but there's a lot of work and a lot of labour that goes into mm. them. Yeah. Sure. Now, I didn't really know that this existed. So we've got some other shots of other displays within the museum. Yeah. So that's the entrance. This is the boy that flies. <laughs> he in flies, the entrance. he flew. Yes. Um, you can see Don Dunstan's little pink shorts there. I think that's one of my jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a jacket very much like well, that. But Bob not Hawk's the pink shorts. Jacket. No, Bob no. Hawke's jacket. You, you know, that is that is so important mm. to have things like the pink yeah. shorts yep. because that changed politics in South Australia It did, and a seemingly, you know, ordinary thing like a pair of shorts and, yeah. and what it means today. Exactly. Yeah. So we display objects and stories and people's lives that um, have had an impact on, on democracy here in South Australia, um, as well as exploring the history of um, the impact of colonisation and democracy on First Nations people and then the activism that came after. Well, see, after that's that. being talked about now that was never talked about. I don't know about you, when, when any baby boomer who went to school in the 50s mm -hmm. would not have learned any Australian history at all. All we learned was English history. Yeah. And um, when you go to England, as we you came from and I've recently been, again, you know more about the English history, the monarchs and mm. what happened and who went to war, when and how and who, than we know what happened in our own backyard, yeah. which mm. is a real shame. It Hence is. your introduction was don't let's make the same mistakes in the future yeah. by knowing more about the past. Um, so is this exhibition free? It is. So the whole centre is free um, and we're located on North Terrace with all the other cultural institutions. We've just got a smaller footprint. Um, yeah, and but it's really easy one to find, isn't it, it? It is. It's on the corner of North Terrace and Kintore Avenue and it's in the State Library's building. So that's the other thing is that this the Centre of Democracy is a collaboration between the History Trust and the State Library, which is the first time this has happened in the state in terms of developing a museum between two organisations. So it's quite significant. Yeah. Wow. So where do you feel you're going with this? Um, look, at the moment we're new, so we're just building our building our profile, but definitely one of our main audiences has been school groups. Yep. And so this is since 1995 when Old Parliament House shut down as a public space and got turned into offices, um, teachers have been missing some like something where they can bring their kids to learn about right. democracy, um, but the social history of democracy, not just how parliament works and yeah. how election and voting works. Um, so we've seen a huge amount of teachers coming through and that's increasing every day. So How much did you know about democracy yourself? Uh, so I knew a little bit. So my thesis for my master's was on um, political history collections that related to, to elections. So it's always been one of those things that I've been really passionate about, sort of a side note. So I'm really lucky to have landed a job where I can explore Absolutely. that. Yeah, Wonderful in a lot of depth. But do you, <laughs> do you well feel, done. yeah, do you feel there needs to be more media coverage of this? Like, 
in Australia, we tend to know more about um, American history than we know about our own, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. And language, the American style of speaking, has infiltrated our language so much as well yeah. that we sort of... If you said to somebody, who's the leader of Australia, they'd probably say Trump. They probably would. That, but they would. That's the... <laughs> and particularly the newer generation. It's, That's you know, what I mean. It's what they're calling global citizenship, where people are a lot more invested in, in the election of the US president or in things like Brexit. Mm. And, you know, so what does that mean for our local issues and, mm. and environmental issues and all of those sorts mm. of things? So this place is really important in terms of getting that message out is there. there. Is there history as it unfolds being represented? Yes, yeah, definitely. We, we have this amazing digital wall in there and we are updating that almost monthly with the new faces that are coming into politics from a South Australian perspective. Yep. Um, and an example of our displays, we collect with the library a lot of those how to vote cards that you get at the oh, yeah, okay. elections that people just chucking out as yeah, you leave. Yeah, we yeah. collect those oh, <laughs> and really? keep them. And then um, we've got the ones from the last state election on display and very soon we'll have the federal elections well, that's, on display. That's interesting you should do that because it is you forget who is yeah. actually running mm. from time, you know, each, those, each those time. Those things tell you so much. Yeah, well, you know, the position. Sure how yeah. to vote to get that party yeah. yes. into power at the time, and that's yeah. like gets lost from memory so quickly. Yeah, so much more to talk about. You must come back and talk to us again. Definitely. But if you can just wait with us until the end of the program, our next special guest is Joni Koo. <laughs> Who is this Joni Koo? <laughs> Teasing. Yes. yes. Welcome back. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, lovely nice to, to see be you back. again. Yes. I know. Isn't it funny? We were just talking about the nicknames we all had at school. We were. And you were Combe. I was Jodie Combe. Jodie Combe. When I'm Joni Coombe. Yes, so. we know you, Joni Coombe. Mm. <laughs> Joni Coombe, who um, is now a patron of Theatre Bugs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you've opened a new incentive, haven't you? I have. So last year I started Girl Power Workshops, which is um, all about wellbeing um, for girls, so empowering them to um, just develop more confidence between the ages of 7 and 12. And so I look at areas like friendship skills and growth mindset and resilience, gratitude, um, body image, uh, those I like gratitude. Areas. Yes. I like that word because mm -hmm. I think that's an age where kids forget someone's out there doing stuff usually called parents. Yes, they that do. Sort yeah. of forget yeah. how important parents yeah. are in life. Yeah, and so we can unpack all that and look at what they're with what they can feel grateful in their lives. And some things are just what they would see as see as quite small things, mm. you know, in terms of um, well, of course, I have um, a, a phone or an iPad or, you know, or toys or pets. Yes. But, you know, then we also look at larger things like, you know, you actually have a home to live in um, and you mm. actually have clean water in. and yeah. a, bed, a warm bed, yes. A mother or a father. Yes, some exactly. Don't have, That's obviously. right. Yeah, so right. they start to get a bit more perspective on their own lives and how their world fits in with the bigger world. Yeah, so. Well it, do you think it's harder now than it used to be? Because. So many kids are sort of cut off onto their iPads or whatever and they're not yeah. having the conversation no. or playing outside with others. No, I think that is part of the problem now with a lot of kids is they aren't having that time to socialise as much. Parents are busier for all sorts of reasons. But, yeah. um, but you know, we are relying. I'm a parent and I know I do this too. Um, do you stick them in front of the TV yeah, and hope for the best. Because um, yeah. it's easy. And, you know, it is tempting to do that. Um, at times, mm. and um, but as a result, they're they're not really socialising in the way they used to, or going and finding their own fun. I mean, even even this afternoon, my own five year old daughter was going around, going, "I'm bored, I'm bored," and so and I'm, well. Find oh, yeah, find something to do. Get over it. Yeah, get over get it. Over get outside it. on the trampoline. You know, <laughs> yes. like, I think a lot of the time parents think they have to have structured activities for them. If they don't, they'll give them the iPad. Mm. But of course, they're not getting those social skills. Um, Gee, that's a really interesting point yeah, you make. Yeah. Um, 
and teaching children to have their own resilience. That's right. And the other thing is too, as they get older and they start to get onto social media, is that um, friendship issues, which, you know, once upon a time when we were at school, you'd have, you know, you have little issues with friends. That's, that's normal, little tips. But you go home, you settle down and, you know, the dust settles and you go back to school the next day and half the time it's just washed over and you forget oh, about it. Yeah. Whereas now they leave school and the issue continues over Snapchat or Instagram or say, mess just messaging each yeah, other. Yeah. yeah so right. it turns into um, well, what I call a bonfire. So in my workshops I talk about true, yeah. friendship fires and how we can prevent them and stop them turning into these big bonfires. And I think social media is part of the, the problem with that. I'm sure it is. See, it's got, it's got great benefits on one hand, but with the great benefits come the other issues. Yeah, We were just absolutely. talking about the history thing before in, in the introduction we were talking about um, if we don't learn from the past we won't really have a successful future. Mm, so so I, I guess we've now got to learn the past is such a short period of time mm. when we talk about social media things. Mm -hmm. We've got to learn how we're going to combat that in the next generation. Exactly. Yeah. But you've also um, understood the issue with children who have domestic violence at home and, and issues with that. Uh, how, how did this come about for you? Um, yeah, well... Um, uh, sorry, before you answer yeah. <laughs> the question, the reason, of course, you're doing this is because you're putting together a show yeah. to... Uh, to um, the the That's proceeds right. of which will go towards this, but mm, so where did this come in your life? Well, um, as part of my... Your father hit business. you with his guitar. Oh. Yeah. That's... <laughs> no, nothing like that. No, I can't say I've been personally affected, so no. I'll get that out he there. He made you sing but too much. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about... <laughs> that was the abuse. Yes. Jo... <laughs> Singing Wash Your Face in Orange Juice exactly. so many times. Exactly. <laughs> Joni's father, Peter. Good. <laughs> Yes. No, um, I, through my business, Girl Power, what, one of the things I'm trying to do is each year is um, hold some kind of fundraising event for uh, a charity that particularly focuses on girls and women. Um, and so last year I, had a, I held a ladies' night out and we raised funds for one girl, which was about educating girls overseas who couldn't receive an education. Brilliant. Or usually married off early. So this year I decided Brilliant. to do something different and having a theatre background, um, I thought I'd use those skills and put together a show um, it's turning into something bigger than Ben Hur. <laughs> but that's the way shows go. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to have yeah, a, a race with horses and things? Is that... <laughs> mm, not exactly, but. No, um... It could happen. <laughs> ben Hur. Oh, oh, OK, I'm of sorry. course, yeah. Of course. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right. Sorry. It's good to have a bit of mime in there. I oh, know. Um, My brain does work in mysterious <laughs> ways. It does. It does. Um, yeah, so I'm organising two concerts. So uh, one is featuring adult performers. They're um, local, local Adelaide uh, singers, but a lot of them actually have... Um, found success nationally, um, mm -hmm. like Mark Stefanov. Um, I have my, my father, Peter Coombe. Of yes, course I've got well, a Mark's just come back him. from doing um, Kinky Boots. Yes, mm. yes, that's right, yeah. Um, David Lampard, who is yep. uh, making it success of himself interstate now. As and, a director, and as an opera director. Yes, yeah. Brilliant. Um, Becky Blake from Chunky yes. Custard. And, yeah, several other performers. She does a great show on piano. We haven't had Becky on the show. I sh you should Becky. have her on. She's, yes. She's brilliant. When you talk yeah. to her, tell her to give me I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, so that show is going to be hosted by Jessica Adamson, who's um, obviously Channel 7 newsreader and then uh, I also have a youth version of the concert the next day so that will feature uh, up and coming rising stars um, so singers and that will be hosted oh, by Jodie Oddy. And where is this happening? At the Star Theatre. Oh, Where's that, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Malcolm and I started talking because oh, we're, yeah. I'm using the Star Theatre and this yeah. was a... Um, yeah, started so here in South Australia, for those in other states, um, the little theatre we're talking about is in the suburbs but just out of the city, so it's always been considered like a city venue. It's a fantastic venue. Yeah. It is. It's one of Adelaide's best theatres. It's, yeah. a, it's a really nice little kooky place, yeah. so to speak. But it's lovely to have you there. You know, it's, it's sad in a way that um, organisations have to fundraise to help people. Mm. But I guess we always have. And in the old days, it often came through church groups and organisations like church groups yeah. or that were funded or organised by that mm. or Country Women's Association. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so many of those, those organisations, probably because of the whole Facebook and, and um, phone business, yeah. are sort of fading away yeah. and we're not coming together like we used to. No, no, that's true. Because I love the scones and all of those things. Oh, yeah, I don't mind a bit of 
Yeah, scones with jam and oh, cream. Oh, all of those things. You're gonna <laughs> Not do that, that we're going to have any of that at our oh, show. No, it should have oh, be more about the wine I was getting and ready for those. the music. But yes. um, but yeah, these shows are raising money for Friends with Dignity. So that's how many a, shows are you doing? Do two shows. Just, two. Just, just the two oh, shows. That's what you said. The yeah. Yes. Afternoon. And we'll have a silent auction and the raffles and. I'm sorry, I'm not available. To to be raffled off or. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, but it'll be a good night, obviously. So oh, it'll be a fun night. I know if you're in the eastern states, we're not talking about you, but you might be coming to Adelaide. And so all of that is on the Star Theatre website, how to get tickets and things for yes. that. Yes, yep, great. And also on your website. Uh, yes, also on my website, which is girlpowerworkshops.com.au. OK. So. so this is just to be helpful within our community uh, in any way that we can, I suppose. Mm. Um, mm. I'd have to say that what you're doing for these kids is fantastic. You know, oh, I thank you. Yeah. Know of anybody else that's actually ever done anything like that? For no, not looking at that no, specific it's an area. Impo important age too, I think, from that age group. Mm, seven, mm. Well, when I first started it, I, I did realise there wasn't a lot there for that age group, yeah. and that's why I did you know, target that group because there there's a little bit more out there for teenagers. Yeah. But I sort of feel like it's almost getting a bit late. So that's why I wanted to focus on the younger mm. younger girls. Well, we've both been right. involved with kids of this age for for a long time. Mm. I actually remember when you were that age. <laughs> yes. I was that age too at the yes, time, really. But um, <laughs> no, but um, it, it's it's the demographic of that age has changed in what they're interested in. Mm. They're made to grow up faster. Mm -hmm. They're mm. infiltrated with fashion and clothing mm. and behaviour. They're exposed to so much more That now. is yeah. so wrong. And they don't necessarily have the maturity that's right. to deal it, with it. And that's why they It's so they wrong for that tools. age. They yeah. just need to be kids. Yes, you know, yes. And run around and get dirty and have fun and, yeah. and not have to worry about the pressures that they do have on them. Mm. Um, how did you connect with this organisation? Friends with Dignity? Yeah. Um, I just did a bit of research uh, in terms of trying to find an organisation I thought really kind of aligned with my values and what I wanted to achieve through this ev these events. Mm -hmm. um, the one, the other thing that appealed to me about this organisation was that they have a, something called the Little Friends Program, um, and that is specifically uh, raising funds for children who have fled, fled domestic violence situations. Um, and they can't afford to go and do activities um, such as music lessons and dance lessons and even just a school excursion. Mm -hmm. um, and so every year they give uh, multiple scholarships up to about $500 um, to children to be able to still experience these things, which, you know, most... Most kids, you know, have a passion for something so Absolutely. that they can still yeah. pursue this. And sometimes it is just a, just the excursion that is so important, you know. In, um, well, just because everybody else is. Exactly. But it's a memory. It it's too. a very positive memory. Exactly. And, and one of the things that happens with, with kids in these situations is they are already feeling isolated. Yeah. Mm, yeah. They've already, you know, gone through so much trauma and then to feel like they're again having to miss out things that their peers are up to. Yeah, that's um, right. It just, you know... Well, Jamie, thanks situation. for doing, you know, for being involved mm. with that. That's fantastic. Look, we've got to take a break and we'll be back in a tick. <laughs> just complimenting you on your hair. It oh. looks lovely. Oh. I've just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, he takes the whole program. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't look at her, I look at her. No, he does. <laughs> Craig, don't nice to have you back. Um, what else is happening uh, in history in your department? In history? Branch. Branch. Big. Branch. Branch, yeah, we're like a something tree. Something special this <laughs> year, isn't it? <laughs> there is something special uh, this year. This is... Um, an anniversary year, 125 years since women won the right to vote and to stand for parliament do in South Australia. Do you remember voting then? Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, why do I put it like this? I don't know. I don't know. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, and why is this so important? Well, to us as, as Australians. As Australians, we were the first... South Australia was the first place in the whole country where this happened um, and the fourth democracy in the world. And this was a game-changer for not just voting and elections but for women's citizenship. It, 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 you know, they were seeing this as a change to their whole world, not just to the to Because the right they, weren't to they weren't allowed to vote. They had to get their husband's signature for... Just Husbands about. basically owned women on marriage, yeah. as if you can put it that basically. Yeah. Um, they couldn't work, they couldn't do all these things. So this was like a huge game changer that eventually led 
to lots of other change, legislative change, social change, women's liberation in the 80s, you know, even now with um, gender identity and the legislation that's changing around that, it's all... You know, it's just like yeah. a rolling... That was like the start of it, wasn't it? It was, I yeah. I honestly can't imagine things not being equal, you know. And mm -hmm. this is obviously something you're working on, but at the early stages. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important. So right the, the show that you're doing to aid... Uh, Friends with Dignity, so that's supporting um, victims of domestic violence. And it's on... It's on the 17th date? and 18th of August. Fantastic. That's just this week. Thank you so much for being part of us. Thank you to our two guests. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon on Ad Time. Keep yourself nice till then. Janice. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Bye.